In this video, we're going to talk about how to work with smart pointers. And the two specific smart pointers we're going to talk about are going to be shared pointers. And then also we'll talk about unique pointers. To work with smart pointers, we need to include the memory header. And I can define a shared pointer object by saying standard shared pointer. And this will be a pointer to an int. And it'll be a new int. We'll initialize it with one. So this is going to create a new int. And it's going to give me a smart pointer to that location. I can do something very similar for unique pointers. So there's my unique pointer. And the difference between the two is that shared pointers can point to memory that multiple things are pointing to. Unique pointers can only point to something that it alone, alone is pointing to. And we'll see how that plays out later. Now, a better way to declare these would be to use the standard make shared function. And we're going to make a shared int. We'll initialize it with five. So this is the type, and this would be the parameters to the constructor for the int. And with unique pointer, it's a similar thing. And notice we're using auto because we don't want to think about what the specific type of this variable is. We can just say auto u pointer 3 is equal to standard make unique. Let's make that 10, and let's make this 2 just so there's no overlap. I'm going to write a function called print pointers. I'll pass each of these pointers to it. And that function is going to take some param four parameters. The first would be a shared pointer of type int. And then we'll have another shared pointer of type int that'll be b. Then we're going to have a unique pointer to an int, and then we'll have one more unique pointer. So we're going to print shared pointer one, and that'll be, we'll dereference A, because again, we're going to treat these like a pointer, so we'll, we can dereference them. If it's pointing to a class or a structure, we'll use the arrow notation. And then let's also see for these shared pointers, since they can have multiple things pointing to them, the count is actually kept track of. So let's print the count as well. And then we'll do the same thing for pointer to the second pointer. And then for the unique pointer, actually it's pointer three, so we'll call it pointer three or unique pointer three. So this should do it. So let's uh, test our, our method. So print pointers, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we're looking for use count in, ah, okay. So it wants the dot notation here. So then we have two decorations for auto u pointer three uh, because that should be u pointer four i think that takes care of both of those so if we run this we can see that here's our values that we're pointing to and notice shared pointer one and two both have a count of one okay so let's start working with these I'm going to say s pointer 1 is equal to 3. And I'll print out that that's what I'm doing. And now we'll print the pointers again. In fact, let's do the same thing. We'll do u pointer 
as well. So I'll copy this code, except I'll change that to U pointer three. I'll set it equal to seven. And I'll update my comment to indicate that that's what we're doing. So you can see that we are, we have our initial values. Then when we change S pointer to three, this goes from one to three. And when we change U pointer one to seven, then the pointer that's, or the integer that's pointing to changes from five to seven. What happens if we do this? So there, we're saying SPTR2 is equal to SPR1. And when we run this, you'll notice now they're both pointing to the same value and the count has now become two. So what if I do this? SPTR2 is equal to new int four. So we basically have changed what S pointer two is pointing to we've created a new element. So when I compile this, you'll see no match for operator equal where we have a shared pointer and an int pointer. So you're not allowed to assign an integer pointer to a shared pointer or a, a general pointer to a shared pointer. So that's not going to work. What I need to do is call the reset member function of shared pointer and pass that a new int. For. So reset basically frees the point, uh, frees the pointer, but it doesn't actually free the memory. It says I'm no longer pointing to this thing, so it'll update the count. If the count goes down to zero, then the memory's freed. So if I did this twice, it would actually free that memory that we were that we were pointing to. But now this says reset. Let go of what you were holding onto before, and now you're going to have a new pointer. So let's compile now. And when we run, you'll notice now we're pointing to four with a count, and both of those have a count of one now. We didn't update shared pointer one, we updated shared pointer two, but share, the, the count of what shared pointer one is pointing to has been reduced to one because we did a reset on two. Okay, so now can we do that with unique pointers? So let's give that a try. I think actually we should put a new line at the beginning here, or actually let's put it at the end. So now we've, we're going to change U pointer three and we're going to do an assignment. And you might not expect that to work since it didn't work with the shared pointer. So you'll notice here, it says use of deleted function. So we're using an operator here. Um, it looks like the uh, overloaded equals operator. So we're basically using the copy assignment. That's what we're trying to do here. And it doesn't allow me to do that because it's a unique, unique pointer. So I can't copy that. Okay, so how about this? What if I say u pointer three is equal to make unique new int 20? So we're not sure we can do that, right? Because we have we have this this syntax but let's give that a try and see what happens. So there's, we can't just make a unique pointer out of this. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to say U pointer three. If I want it to point to what U pointer four is pointing to, I'm going to have to use the move function. To say move the responsibilities of four into three. Let's copy what we're doing there just so that we're clear in the output. Don't think I saved that. So we have a nested, oh, so we only have one colon there. There should be two. So now when I run this, well, that seemed to work. Unique pointer three is pointing to 10, although I should be nervous it hasn't completed yet. And that's because it's going to segmentation fault. Because remember, this, this pointer has been 
freed. We've we've moved its responsibilities into U pointer three. So now this doesn't really point to anything. So I think the best way to do this would be to just print out shared pointer three by itself. We could do the other two if we'd like, but we've already, this is the only one that's changed. But the key is we can't call this function anymore with U pointer four because it's not pointing to anything. So let's run this just to show and did that not save? I don't think that saved. Oh, we, we didn't delete this function call here. So let's compile and run. And so there you see that now pointer three is pointing to what pointer four was pointing to. So this uh, is a quick introduction to shared pointers. We'll do another shared pointer video where we go over exactly why that works and, and what sort of advantage that a shared point or a unique pointer gives you over the a regular raw pointer. And one other thing is because shared pointer is shared, you can wind up in cases where you don't free every instance of a thing that's referring to that pointer. So usually you're going to want to stick with unique pointers unless you have a good reason to go with a shared pointer.